Hello everyone, for this particular lecture video, we're actually on the second part of the stoichiometry part 3 um, lecture video. Now, let me just start by giving you the topic. The topic is all about mass relationships in a chemical reaction. Okay, now we'll be talking about stoichiometry shortly. Again, apologies for the ambient noises that you may be hearing or currently hearing. But nonetheless, let's focus on the content that I am explaining. Okay, now what about stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is simply the study of the quantitative relationships between the reactants and products in a chemical reaction. Meaning to say, stoichiometry is entirely a study or a topic in chemistry we're in. We deal with the relationship, particularly quantitative relationship, between your reactant and product within a chemical reaction. So meaning to say, most of the time when we're dealing stoichiometry, there is an involvement of a chemical reaction, chemical equation in a quantitative relationship. Now, let me discuss how we can calculate amount of reactants and products. Now, there is a method, there is a method that we call as mole method of solving stoichiometry problems. Now, in this particular method, the stoichiometric coefficients in a balanced chemical equation is interpreted as the number of moles of each substance. Meaning to say, when we do the mole method in solving stoichiometric problems, we'll be using particular coefficients, which are your stoichiometric coefficient found in the chemical equation. What does that mean? Now, look at the PowerPoint presentation. Now, here we have a balanced chemical reaction or chemical equation. We have one mole of nitrogen gas reacts with three moles of hydrogen gas that yields to two moles of NH3 gas. Okay? Now, automatically, if there is no numerical coefficient, that will be one, such as this one. Now, the red font numbers, such as the one, three, and two, those are what we call the stoichiometric coefficient. Ang tawag po natin sa mga numero na ito, nitong 1, 3, at 2, yung mga pinaglalagay po natin tuwing nagbabalance tayo ng chemical equation, ang tawag po doon ay stoichiometric coefficient. Itong mga 1, 3, at 2, or any number kung ano man lagay natin dyan, sila po yung nagsasabi kung gaano kadaming moles ang meron itong mga reactant and product side. Now, dito na papasok yung idea ng mole method. Okay. Itong mga numbers na yan, itong mga stoichiometric coefficient, sila po ay gagamitin natin as factors when we compute stoichiometric problems. So, let me continue. Okay? Now, those numbers can be interpreted as molar ratios. In stoichiometric calculations, the coefficients are considered as the molar ratios. So, ibig sabihin po, itong mga stoichiometric coefficient na ito na nasa previous slide, this particular slide, itong 1, 3, and 2, Sila po ay gagamitin as molar ratio as indicated by the first point. Therefore, the said relationship or molar ratios can also be written as conversion factor. So, ibig sabihin po, ito pong 1N2, 3H2, and 2NH3, yung mga particular numerical coefficient po nila ay pwedeng gamitin as conversion factor. Now, since pwede gamitin conversion factor ang molar ratio, you can actually write or input that one in your pool of conversion factor. Say, for example, you have here conversion factor, and then you have a new form of conversion factor, what we call molar ratios. Okay? Molar ratios. Say, for example, you were asked, what will be the molar ratio? Okay? What is the molar ratio between H2 and NH3? So, you will answer or you will write a conversion factor. Say, for example, you have here 3 moles of H2 all over 2 moles of NH3, or another format is 2 moles of NH3 all over 3 moles of H2. Okay? So, saan po nang galing itong mga numero na ito? Itong 3 ay galing sa numerical coefficient ni H2. Itong 2 moles of NH3 ay galing sa number 2 numerical coefficient ni NH3 from the balanced chemical equation. And then, the arrangement of the numerator and denominator is interchangeable Dahil nga depende sa need mong i-cancel. Say, for example, you need to cancel moles of NH3. So, kailangan nasa denominator si mole NH3. Now, say, for example, kailangan makancel si mole H2. So, mole H2 ang nandito sa given, makakancel na siya. Since nasa denominator ito, you will get or you will cancel the particular unit. Okay? 
Now, another example. Say, for example, what is the molar ratio between N2 and H2? So, again, you have one mole of nitrogen gas all over three moles of hydrogen gas. And then, another format is, again, interchanging them since, again, depende siya case-to-case -case basis kung alin yung need mong i-cancel out or need mong or required na unit. So, this could be 3 moles of H2 all over 1 moles of N2. Okay? So, that is idea between molar ratio. Now, at this point, for example, ang pinahanap naman ay mole ratio between N2 and NH3. So, titingin ka lang dito. A probable molar ratio would be 1 mole of N2 all over 2 moles of NH3. Or another format is you have 2 moles of NH3 all over 1 mole of N2. Okay, so sorry about this one. Let us write this one as OR. Para hindi nakakalit ang OR. Okay? Okay, so that is how we determine molar ratio. The bottom line is that hindi mo pwede or hindi mo malalaman kung alin ang molar ratio kung hindi pa balance ng chemical equation. Meaning to say, precursor sa pag-alam ng molar ratio ang pagbabalance. So, dapat balance mo ng chemical equation bago mo madiskubre or mabigay ang mga molar ratio. Okay? Okay. Now, let us have this bit of an example. So, say for example, show what the molar ratios should be. So, letter A, I was asked to give the molar ratio for C4H10 all over O2. Okay, so that will be first C4H10. So the chemical equation is already balanced, so I will write 2 moles of, this is C4H10 all over O2. So look at, looking at the numerical coefficient of O2, I have 13 moles of O2. Now how about letter B? O2 all over CO2 daw ang molar ratio. So oxygen gas is 13 moles, so 13 moles of O2 all over CO2. CO2 is 8. 8 moles of CO2. So, this will be the answers for this particular bit. Again, this could be interchangeable. Itong arrangement na 2 over 13 at 13 over 8, interchangeable po siya dahil nga again, depende siya or depende sa magiging unit or mole unit for an element ang nire-require. So, for example, ang required mo ay mole. Ang required na makancel ay mole O2. So, dapat nasa denominator to. Kung mole C for H10 naman ang kailangang makancel, mag interchange lang sila. Or kailangan lang magbaliktad itong mole C for H10 with moles O2 arrangement. So, pwede, so magiging ano siya? 13 moles of O2 all over 2 moles of C for H10. Depending nga kung ano ikakancel. Kasi nga, conversion factor siya. Just as what we learned from dimensional analysis. Again, hopefully that is clear. Now, let me show you the steps in solving stoichiometry problems. Now, the following steps is a general approach in solving stoichiometric problems. Say, for example, the given was mass, and you need to convert it into unit mole. So, mass A, gagawing mole unit A. A represents any compound or any substance. So, say, for example, ang binigay sa iyo ay grams of Fe or grams of iron. Ang kailangan daw, si grams iron ay gawin mong mole iron. So, para to convert gram iron into mole iron, anong gagawin? Ang gagamitin mong conversion factor ay itong mga naka-bold naka, naka bold na font. So, molar mass of iron ang gagamitin mo. Now, say for example, you need to convert um, gram A into mole unit B. So, A and B magkaibang uri ng substance. So, that means your way or your direction would be using molar mass A as the first conversion factor and then use molar ratio of A and B as a second factor for you to get the final answer. So you just simply follow this particular arrangement and things will be smooth flowing. Okay? Okay. So let me just um, give an example on how we may apply this one. So before we proceed, just a heads up. The following factors are to be used in mass relationship. So, ito po yung mga gagamitin natin yung factors para hindi malito. Kapag stoichiometry at mass relationship ang topic, ang gagamitin natin na factors ay pwede or isa o itong dalawa. Molar mass ng substance. So, ang molar mass ay gram per mole. 
Then another factor that you may use is molar ratio between substance A and substance B. Yung kakaturo lang kanina, ayun po yung molar ratio. So, mamimili ka lang sa dalawa na gagamitin. Yung, is, yung molar mass ba, molar ratio bang factor, or parehas mong gagamitin. So, let me give you the example now. Okay? So, let this be an example. So, the question is, how many moles of oxygen gas are produced by the decomposition of 6 moles of potassium chlorate? Now, this is a sample problem showing as mole unit needs to be converted into mole unit. So, let, let me write that one. Mole is needed to be converted into another mole unit. So, mole of substance A needs to be converted. Let me write this one in a better sense. So, we need to convert mole of substance A into mole of substance B. Okay? So, the question is, how many moles of O2 are produced by the decomposition of 6 moles of potassium chlorate? Now, before you proceed, um, answering or proceeding to the solving problem or the problem solving itself, check if the chemical equation is balanced. Okay? So, let us check if the chemical equation is balanced. This is KClO3 decomposes into KClO2. Okay? So, again, ang gagawin po muna natin ay account each number of subscript of elements. So, potassium, chlorine, oxygen, potassium, chlorine, oxygen. So, we have here 1, 1, and then 3 for oxygen. And this is 1 potassium, 1 chlorine, and then 2 oxygen. Now, at this point, we can see that hindi pantay itong oxygen. It looks like oxygen on the left side is much higher than that of the right side. So, kailangan natin sila mabalance. So, what do you think okay, is the number or the numerical coefficient that we need to add on the left side and on the right side that would create equal number of oxygen atoms? I think a better coefficient for the left side is putting 2 here. And on the right side, since oxygen lang naman ang may naapektuan, I'll be putting 3 here. Okay? So, putting that one, it would affect, so 3 times 2 for oxygen, that will give me 6. And for oxygen here at the left side, 2 times 3, this will also affect it, this will give me 6. 2 times 3, 6 oxygen atoms. However, since KClO3 ito isang buong compound, maapektuan din si potassium at chlorine. So, hindi na lang ito 1 at 1. So, your potassium will be 2 times 1 subscript. You have 2. 2 times 1 subscript for chlorine. This will be 2. Now, at this point, hindi na po balance ang potassium at chlorine. Pero balance ni oxygen. So, we may proceed going back or proceed tayo with, chlor with chlorine and potassium. So, kailangan natin mabalance ang dalawa. Between the left side and the right side, alin ang mas madaling i-balance? Mas madaling i-balance or galawin o lagyang numerical coefficient po ay itong nasa, ka nasa kanan. Bakit? So, you have here 2 and 2 for potassium and chlorine. You have here potassium and chlorine on the right side, 1 and 1. Mamili ng mas mababa, ang mas mababang value ay itong nasa kanan. So, mas madaling i-manipulate na gawing 2. How? By putting numerical coefficient 2 here. And now, this will be affected. This will no longer be um, particularly 2 for themselves. So, potassium here will be 2. Chlorine will be 2. And now, this is already balanced. So, this will be your balanced chemical equation for the problem. So, let me check. Okay, so the strategy is write the balanced chemical equation. I have the same balanced chemical equation. At this point, I may now proceed with the problem solving. So, how many moles of O2 are produced by the decomposition of 6 moles of potassium chlorate? So, 6 moles. So, that will be, oh, so I'll, I'll assume that will be 6. Okay, so, 6 moles of potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate is KClO3. Okay, I need to convert mole KClO3 into what? Into moles of O2. So, your substance A is KClO3 and your substance B is your O2. So, in converting mole unit into another mole unit, the best factor is molar ratio. So, molar ratio po ang gagamitin natin. Molar ratio between what? 
between KClO3 and O2. So, I will put here mole unit and then mole unit. Next na tanong, anong substance ang ilalagay sa numerator at denominator? Since KClO3 ang kailangan i-cancel, dapat ang nasa denominator ay KClO3 at O2 naman ang nasa numerator since ito yung dapat na final answer. Now, what will be the value? Again, that will be molar ratio. So, look at O2. Your numerical coefficient is 3. For KClO3, that will be 2. So, mole KClO3 will be cancelled. You now have the unit moles of O2, which is the one you're required to have an answer. Okay? So, input this one in the calculator. I have the answer, 9 moles of O2. Okay? So, again, the answer will be 9 moles of O2. In the PowerPoint, the answer was 9.0 kasi what was written is 6.0 pero ang sinulat ko lang ay 6.0. I, I assume it was only 6 as a one digit. That is why I gave 9 as one significant figure as an answer. Pero with the PowerPoint, it was 6.0. So dahil 2 sig fig yan, the final answer is also 2 significant figure, 9.0. But nonetheless, if I only wrote 6, my final answer should only be 1 sig fig, which is 9. Entirely correct. But with the PowerPoint, this is another context for measurement. 6.0 is 2 sig fig, kaya 9.0 yung sa kanya. But nonetheless, we have the same value per se. Okay? Again, when you want to convert mole A into mole B, your conversion factor is molar ratio between the substances. Okay? Okay. Next. For the next sample problem, we'll be needing to convert mole unit into gram unit. Now, we can actually see that we'll be dealing with the same balanced chemical equation like the previous example. So, let me write that one. That is actually um, 2 moles of potassium chlorate decomposes into 2 moles of potassium chloride and 3 moles of oxygen gas. So, reading the problem. What is the mass of potassium chlorate needed to produce 2.50 moles of oxygen? So the process on how we can solve for this particular problem is that the given is mole of oxygen gas, the given here, is needed to be converted first into mole of potassium chlorate before we can have the final answer which is mass of potassium chlorate, that is grams of potassium chlorate. Okay, so that means we'll be needing to convert or we'll be needing two different conversion factors for this to be realized. So to convert mole O2 into mole KClO3, we'll be needing a conversion factor. And that particular conversion factor is your molar ratio. Molar ratio between O2 and KClO3. And to convert mole KClO3 into gram KClO3, will be needing molar mass, molar mass of KClO3. So let me show you how this is done. So you have here your guide. Okay, this is your guide. So your given is 2.50 moles of O2. So I'll be using molar ratio as indicated by the guide. So I'll be writing mole O2 here at the denominator and then moles of KClO3 at the numerator because mole O2 needs to be cancelled. Now, what will be the numerator? The numerator for KClO3 is this one, numerical coefficient. The denominator's value will be O2, O2's uh, numerical coefficient, this one, 3. So, at this point, you are now in mole KClO3. Okay? Next step is another conversion factor. This time, we'll be needing molar mass. Molar mass of what? KClO3. Now, the molar mass of potassium chlorate is not provided by the problem, so you need to convert for the molar mass from scratch. Molar mass of KClO3. So, compute for them, potassium, chlorine, oxygen. So, account the number of subscripts for each element. So, potassium has 1, chlorine has 1, oxygen has 3. And then, look at the periodic table for their, for their molar masses. Potassium is here. So, I'll be getting up until two decimal places. So, let me round that off. That is 39.10. Chlorine is this one, 35.45. 35.45. And then you have here oxygen, which is 16.00. And then, adding up the product, you will get the summation. 
Okay, so we need to add the products all in all. Okay, so from the calculator, we have here um, 1 times 39.10 plus 1 times 35.45 and then added with the last bit 3 times 16.00 I have 122.55 122.55 grams per mole so I'll be using this particular answer from the summation of the molar mass as my last conversion factor so moles of KClO3 will be at the denominator and then grams of KClO3 will be at the numerator because this is the one we're required to have as an answer. Now again, gram per mole. When we say per mole, that means that is 1. And then 122.55 will be at the numerator. So this will be cancelled. I now have my desired unit, gram KClO3. Gram KClO3. KClO3. So input this one in the calculator. I have the same solution with that of the PowerPoint, and then the answer is according to three significant figure because our given is only 2 pin 50. Remember, your conversion factors are not candidates for your least significant figure because they are exact numbers. Therefore, 2.50 is the only given that we have as a candidate for least significant figure. 2.50 has three significant figure. That is why 204 has three significant figure. And that is how, or that is your final answer for this particular sample problem on converting a mole unit into gram unit. Okay? Okay. Next sample problem, we'll be talking about converting mass unit into mass unit. Now, looking at the problem, we actually have the same balanced chemical equation like the previous two. So, let me write 2 KClO3 yields to 2 KCl plus 3 moles of oxygen gas. So let me read the problem. Calculate the mass of oxygen gas in grams that can be obtained from 46.0 grams of KClO3. So looking at the problem, this is actually a conversion of grams, KClO3. Okay. So we need to convert gram KClO3 into moles of KClO3 first, and then convert it into moles of O2, before we get the final answer, which is grams of O2. Okay, so this is your given grams KClO3, 46.0, as you can see it here. And then your final answer is grams O2, this one. But before you can directly be or be given with the final answer, you need to do three conversion or three conversion factors to be utilized for the problem. So we'll be using or we'll be deriving or following this procedure. So let me give an example or let me follow this way. Okay, so let me write the given 46.0 grams of KClO3. Okay, so to convert KClO3, gram KClO3 into mole KClO3, we'll be using molar mass as the conversion factor. So we need to convert or rather find the molar mass of KClO3. Since the molar mass of KClO3 is not provided, we need to, again, compute for it. Okay? KClO3. So, potassium, chlorine, oxygen. Account the number of atoms, 1, 1, 3. And then multiply them by their respective molar masses. So, potassium is this one. I'll get the two decimal places rounded off number, 39.10. For chlorine, um, I have 35.45. And then for oxygen, I have 16.00. And then add the particular products for each element. Okay, so let me calculate that one. That one. Okay, so this will be um, 1 times 39.10 plus 1 times 35.45 plus 3 times 16.00. I have 122.55. 122.55 gram per mole. Now, this will be used as a conversion factor. So, I'll put 1 mole and then 1 mole of KClO3 and then 122.55 grams of KClO3 at the denominator for the unit to be cancelled. I now 
have the unit mole of KClO3. So that means I am now on the second um, procedure. Next, to convert mole KClO3 into mole O2, I'll be using the conversion factor molar ratio. So I'll be putting at the denominator mole of KClO3 and then mole of O2 at the numerator because that is the one I'm required to have okay, for the third unit. So for the molar ratio, I'll be using this. Okay, I'll be using the balanced chemical equation, the balanced chemical equation here. So for the value of the numerator, I'll be using 3 for O2. For KCLO3, I'll be using 2 because that's the numerical equation as it is balanced. So mole of KCLO3 will be cancelled. I now have the unit mole of oxygen gas. I am now here at this particular process. So last step, to convert mole O2 into grams of O2, I'll be using the conversion factor molar mass. But this time, the molar mass of O2. Okay, so I need to convert or have or compute for molar mass of O2. Oxygen has two molecules, or rather two atoms, sorry, then multiply by the molar mass of oxygen, 16. So input that one in your calculator, 2 times 16.00, you have 32.00 gram per mole. So 32.00 gram per mole will be the molar mass here as the last conversion factor. So moles of O2 will be in the denominator and then 32.00 grams here at the numerator. Cancel, cancel. Okay. I now have my desired unit, which is grams of O2. So let me write that one. My desired unit, grams of oxygen gas, which is the one that I am required to solve for the last problem or this particular problem. So input in the calculator. I actually have the same solution. Then input in the calculator, I shall have 18.0 grams of O2. Check if it follows correct significant figure. Again, your conversion factor, molar mass of KCLO3, molar ratio between KCLO3 and O2, and molar mass of O2 are not candidates for your least significant figure for the final answer because they are exact number. Therefore, only 46.0 is your candidate as the given, 46.0 has 3 significant figure. My answer, 18.0 has 1, 2, 3 significant figure. Indeed, this is my final answer. Okay? Okay. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you learned a thing or two on this particular topic of mass relationship. And I hope you also have a great day.